I know I'm coming between the lunch, but uh, <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, happy to be here and part of this session and wonderful AV from the Advantage Club and uh, very powerful and the panel is really, you know, uh, very, very esteemed colleagues, some known colleagues, Colin here, Colin from uh, Voltas and uh, we have uh, Pramod and from one of the largest bank ecosystem, I would say, and uh, Poonam from Raymond's and we have Lokendra from Advantage Club. And briefly about me, uh, I am from Arthi Industries. Arthi is uh, majors in specialty chemicals and pharmaceuticals. And last four years I am there as uh, CHRO and uh, like really transforming and looking the company. And uh, to begin the session, you know, it's like very interesting in terms of the questions which has been shared by the <coughs> organizers. And uh, one of the fundamental questions, I think rewards is very close to each and every one. And that is something, you know, everybody look forward at the end of the month and uh, so the first question uh, to the panelist from my side is uh, there are you know various pillars to the rewards uh, and we sometimes call it total rewards so what in your opinion are the fundamentals and the most core pillars of the rewards total rewards so i like to invite um, uh, we should make it change not the ladies first we should do it uh, differently the youngest one is Look in, yeah. So, sure. uh, why don't you, you know, give a try to this? You know, what what could be in your view are the foundation uh, pillars for the total rewards? Sure. So, when we talk about pillars, then a total reward strategy should have or should be formed on the foundation of three major pillars. One is top down by the management, bottom up, and peer to peer. That's what our understanding is after working with so many clients, this is what we have learned, that uh, whenever, so if, if a recognition program was strategized or created in all the three directions, then it is a complete reward strategy that is created. So uh, according to us, uh, or a case study, uh, wherever there was a top-down management recognition happening, there was 45% lesser attrition. But when it was combined with peer-to-peer -peer appreciation as well, the attrition delta was 70%. So these are the three major pillars according to us, top down, peer to peer appreciation and bottom up. Excellent, look, very, you know, very practical insight shared by you. I'm sure Colin would have some more, you know, you know, insights and based on his experience, I think he would elaborate this further, Colin. Yeah, thanks Manoj. In fact, uh, good, to be, good to sit with you again for this one. And um, uh, fundamentally, uh, if you ask me, uh, the most important pillar to me is compensation because you know we don't live on love and fresh air and i think that's most important for all of us uh, uh, how you really you 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 really uh, structure your compensation whether you bring in uh, incentives which are short term long term uh, uh, you know or deferred cash that's those are those are aspects that that can be dealt with so compensation benefits and i think the most important point that i want to talk about is benefits because there is an increasingly uh, a, a large move towards, you know, looking at wellness, and uh, you know, given what what we have transpired over the last two uh, two years, so wellness definitely in, uh, is is one important area. But also, organizations are looking at structuring benefits in a far more in, uh, uh, intelligent manner now. The the next one, of course, is uh, on performance recognition. Uh, the last two years, we've gone through a situation where you know, uh, where performance has been questioned, where uh, budgets have been questioned, uh, whether people have been recognized as, as adequately as possible. And the last one and the last, uh, the second last one, I would say career development. What, what are the various areas that one can look, create a career? And in the last two years, I think the most important one to each and every individual today is flexibility. Yeah. So I think these are really pillars that come together and really put the total rewards table in some way or the other. Now, uh, it contributes obviously to, to advocacy, to loyalty, and a whole bunch of things. I think very, very fundamental, Colin, and a great you touched upon flexibility. And, uh, you know, very, very important aspect in your uh, HR strategy now. You know, horses for the courses and 
how it can be structured. So, Poonam, what do you think about this? You know, how Raymond's has been uh, so successful, you know, over so many decades and how reward has really played a strategic role there. Uh, so, basically for Raymond, it is 95 plus years organization. And uh, rewards is, I think, so it's a core. Total rewards is a core uh, for any individual for to if he or she wants to work in the organization, that is the one basic fundamental should be right, then I can be there in that organization for longer time. That is what we all think. And therefore, we launched Project Core recently. Uh, about Raymond and uh, structure, we what we have is learning development of individual we promote a lot in our organization. Uh, flexibility is our core of our reward. And at the same time, compensation, we are not very competitive, but we are a very, um, you know, agile organization. So we believe in our talent. And based on, you know, it is very customized uh, reward system we have for our people. We understand from people, we do reviews, we do survey, and accordingly we develop our strategy. So it is like we hear, we listen to you, and we are continuously listening to our people. Accordingly, we are developing our things, our rewards. So more of an agile reward system we have in our organization. So another thing is for front end, we, our organization is more of a front end, back end, and manufacturing uh, sector as well. So accordingly, we are develop our reward system. Excellent. I think. Uh very, very important, the agile part of it, you know, so important in the given situation. So promote the, you know, in the banking ecosystem, how does this work? Right. Um, just excuse me, I'm going to be a little bit witty, uh, bring in a sense of humor as well. So I'm going to beat the age of 95 to 230 years <laughs> old bank. Uh, so we've been existing for a couple of centuries as well and sailing through a lot of headwinds. Um, so in terms of the pillars of rewards, uh, it's very contextual in terms of how exactly a strategy will play out and how the pillars have evolved over the last two decades especially. It's only two decades that India has witnessed or our region has witnessed a high level of mix of total reward strategy from pure play compensation mix to uh, benefits evolution to a flex platform, from then evolution to a well-being platform then carving out niche and well-being platforms across four different pillars of physical, emotional, financial, and social. So there are many, many pillars as to how it has evolved over the last two decades, and it is changing with rapid agility today. So a strategy and the pillars will continue to evolve, and that's how we have been evolving to sustain in this largest financial ecosystem. Excellent, I think, uh, how it is supporting and keeping the business sustainable over so many you know, decades. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I take 30 seconds here, you know, I tell you something. In 2010, I did a certification on total, being a total rewards professional. And that changed my life, you know, in terms of really contributing. And that point of time, I was part of Aditya Pila group. And uh, I started working on rewards as my, you know, future. And 2010, or rather 2009 to 2020, uh, 2015, or later in with Vedanta Resources up to 2018, I actively worked in this portfolio, performance and rewards, leading the as a COE. And what I realized, you know, setting up the foundation is very, very important in the eyes of the people. That is one. Second, educating the people, you know, what is this total rewards world is. So I remember I started a compensation communication across the factories and offices, you know, talking to thousands of people during that March, April, May, and, you know, making them aware what exactly are the direct or indirect part of it. I think that is very, very key. You know, it should not be a very hush hush affair. If it has to be, you know, real value in the eyes of the people so that you can, you know, really drive their behavior accordingly. What Colin mentioned, you know, what comes as a cash part, your salaries, your incentives, but there are 
you know poonam mentioned lot of developmental part your career growth development your pockets and benefits your quality of work life the agility part in in the flexibility part in it i think you need to continuously you do that and the last most important aspect is the timeliness i concluded for arthi industries march month bonus payout april month increments payout i am done for the year people are clear did the compensation communication and now we have a virtual platform available i think that's the happiness this pro, this function can brief bring and that is where you know my request and suggestion to all of you kindly you know take it as a you know your future and contribute towards that business sustainability when people are happy i think you did a great job coming back to that you know all of us have gone through a very turbulent time in last two and a half years and it has been really really painful how this reward has really contributed in bringing your people and attending to the job you know during pandemic you know there is very very many many companies have taken many initiatives and i will be really really looking forward from the you know panelists to talk about those unique things which they could you know bring it and i tell you it has to be a very courageous effort from the these people to introduce that unique element in their reward strategy during this 2 3 years and extend it and implement and execute with the people so colin what do you think about it you know what you did unique and which really really helped people and cared people so yeah in fact uh, manoj while you were talking i was just going to pick up the mic because i was excited to answer this one um uh, but but i'll tell you something that we did during this pandemic is um, we introduced a reward and recognition program in the company a uh, fairly new company uh, and we also have a manufacturing facility in our factory uh, at sanand where we are manufacturing refrigerators and washing machines right now so we introduced a program called impact making every day better now what was this program really about it focused on efforts it focused on results it focused on excellence and it also focused on behavior uh these were basically our four pillars and fundamentals by which uh the entire program was being driven and being a new factory the most important thing was you know how do you have you how do you have continuous improvement yeah you build a culture of continuous improvement that's how you're able to to move forward uh, that's how you're going to make small changes that will have a bigger impact over a longer period of time and i can tell you the proof of the pudding was actually when we saw so many things that actually emerged even from shop floor workers yeah yeah that uh these are the small changes i could make in my processes yeah and we got we got a lot of lot of suggestions we we rewarded them we got suggestions where they were which were monetized in terms of value that was to the company i think that's that was significant and while we made a small start i think the important thing is that we're going to take this program ahead uh, and cover cover various facets of the four pillars Uh, uh and actually take this program to a different level so that's what something that we uh, did during three very very important the cultural fabric of it so lokendra you know very smart and quick short question answer from you on this how okay. what about sure. you sure so i think during pandemic lot of organizations they became more people centric yeah. they started caring more for their employees in terms of wellness in terms of financial wellness also so what we Uh, took as an initiative during those uh, during that specific phase was that we introduced something called earned wage access or early wage access where if an employee is in need of at that particular moment then on the portal itself or on the inter in internal organizations portal itself he can apply for a for an advanced salary program or for an earned wage access whatever he has worked for so that at that particular moment the employee can be supported with funds That's which can be adjusted later in his consecutive salaries or we also created something like a community where employees Lovely. were helping each other directly yeah. where they can mention their problems and employees other peers of theirs can help them directly on the portal itself excellent it takes lot of effort to you know develop this ecosystem so what about tumod you know in bny so how does did that really I, be you know rolled out there sure i'll, I'll keep it a little humble as you know the clock over there and you know as hr fraternity over here by every second how many offers did you release how many decline ratios did you see so i'm just looking at that and it makes me resonate with that so how did we actually sail through the last 
two and a half years uh, was on two words, uh, care and empathy, which Lokendra alluded to words as well. So we, we created a war room in terms of core people that can take decisions at a global level and at a regional level. And what mattered most was my own experience of what I've gone through by losing my own parents as well during this particular time. And that gave me that window, like many other leadership people stood up put yourself in that particular empathetic shoes and take that uh, drive forward. So a couple of things that what, what we wanted to achieve first is how do we uplift our employees in the current crisis? Number one, employees is we begin with. Then how, did we, how do we uplift the ecosystem around the employees? And how do we uplift the ecosystem around the community? These are the three circles that we looked at from BNY Mellon. First, in terms of recuperation, that is what everybody had to go through, right? We had to look at physical well-being recuperation. So what unique did we do? We partnered with leading hotel hospitality chains and our own cafeteria network and delivered food to all our employees and our families, whoever were affected to the remote parts of the country, number one. Two, to support our clients, what did we do to help set up the infrastructure? To the remote parts of the country, we delivered UPS. Everybody has a laptop, but nobody realized how much of a power interruption would be there when people are at homes. We delivered UPS, not for one hour or two hours, for the hours that is needed to deliver for our clients. That's something unique and unheard of. Third, we were one of the forerunners when IRDA was releasing on COVID-related insurance. We went ahead and gave supplemental insurance in addition to the primary insurance cover that each and everybody would do. So it's going beyond the call of duty and adding that extra financial security because IRDA was scrambling to see what is the level of consumables that will take a hit. Everybody as benefit professionals know that there is a, a exclusion clause which comes in terms of PPEs and other things where employees were going through painful times. That was unique as well. Fourth, in terms of offering flexibility and remote coverage, being a regulated entity, it was so important for us to sustain the risk and control aspect as well. So we went through the element of trust in investing on our employees with the financial ecosystem that we believe in. That was another winning proposition too. So like this, I don't want to steal the thunder, but what we kept is simple gestures in the signatures that, you know, how are you doing today? It's okay to be not okay, right? rescheduling meetings with 10 minutes delta. For example, typically Microsoft offers a half an hour window, but we used to schedule meetings with 20 minutes. We give the next five minute buffer for a bio break as well in a virtual mode as well. We wrote blogs promoting employees to take vacation. People had no opportunity to take a downtime, go anywhere as well. So we gave the downtime opportunity being at home as well. Like that, we took ample amount of opportunities to take that sweet spot in meeting peoples in their moments of their life. What mattered to them? Excellent. I think uh, the way passionately Pramod shared and uh, it has a, you know, the whole uh, two, three years, I'm sure the, you know, if you see the positive side of it, it, it was kind of a boom for HR people their image, their credibility in the eyes of people has gone up significantly. Nobody can, you know, uh, be so appreciative about HR function now. You know, we always fought for it, you know, what HR can bring. But now people have demonstrated, HR team has demonstrated that and people have experienced it. Nobody questions anymore now. That's the big shift has come. Personally to me, I tell you, during this pandemic, I, I became more empathetic. As a, or it has a deeper impact on my behavior, whatever you were narrating. And during pandemic, I actually dropped my title in the eyes of the people. I am no more a CHRO. I said, don't relate to me as a CHRO. I am an enabler and a medium for you to realize your vision and I am a listener. Relate to me as, as per my declaration. Don't relate to me as per my title. And that's the, that's how, you know, it has impacted many of you. I am sure you would have great stories around this uh, during pandemic. And that has impacted the HR function and that has impacted the whole credibility aspect of the HR. And that has been a big, big, I would say, 
uh, you know, change which has world over has come towards the people function. And all of us have become more humble. The gratitude levels are highest. And we have become a better listener in our life. So thanks, thanks, Pramod, for your very passionate um, things. Now coming to uh, Colin, you know, very simple question. How does reward really benefit the strategy? You know, is can can reward has a has a role to play towards business strategy sustainability, and if yes, how it is, or in your experience, really it has worked or not? Yeah, in fact, um, uh, I think reward has got a very direct correlation with strategy uh, because a lot of what and uh, what is really decided from an apex level or from an organization level needs to be driven by people and needs to be needs to be incentivized yeah. so that it is driven accordingly. Uh, there has to be a strong, to ensure that this works seamlessly and also so to ensure that this works um, uh, in, in line with the strategy, there needs to be a clear line of sight between what the overall business strategy is and therefore what reward will Will, will, will come out of that. And beyond that, I think it's, uh, it's not only what emerges out of the strategy, but also what the, what's the behavior that you want to drive in the organization, which is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, because if you want to drive a culture that is performance oriented, or you want to drive a culture that is focused on uh, the longer term future, your reward will need to be uh, sliced and diced in that appropriate way. So if, if, you're, if you're a startup company, or if you're in a growth phase or a mature phase, you will need to really design your reward uh, that is relevant to, to, the, to the condition. You will also need to probably look at your reward to also the industry that you are in. Mm -hmm. um, for, for us, uh, to being a startup company, we've also designed our reward framework uh, in, in such a way uh, where, you can, where we are able to provide a line of sight to a longer term uh, goal for the organization and a drawback the performance through them. Excellent. A lot of great points made by Colin, you know, uh, which part of the business you are in, mature or growing or fantastic. Poonam, 100-year-old company. What did it do? Yeah. So, uh, with Raymond, it is largely uh, how we develop. Our strategy is, you know, customer centricity is what we are focusing on. So we were product organization earlier. We moved to customer centric organization now. Yeah. So our reward systems are also evolving towards that. So earlier it was more of a very rigid reward system. Now it is very flexible and employee centric reward system we have. So as I mentioned, a very flexible and we listen to people. We continuous understand from them and continuously understanding from them. And then accordingly, we are developing a reward system. That is one thing. And largely what we do is our rewards are, you know, it is not just uh, uh, focused towards uh, learning development, career paths are given, compensations are there and policies. Yeah. Policies, guidelines are very flexible. And, and one more important thing is benefits like crush facilities and everything towards people. So it is helping employees. Our leave facilities and benefits are really good. So all these things are really, you know, helping organization also to achieve uh, a target because employees are more productive when they are given work-life balance. So that is very, very important. And another thing is our reward strategy is we, uh, you know, the way we listen employees continuously, uh, we are taking their feedback. However, we also give feedback to them. So our review mechanism. So the time you start reviewing people on a monthly basis and you're giving feedback to them and then it helps us to achieve our performance also. That is helping us a lot. So accordingly, we are great. just talking uh, about great points, Puna. You know how the rewards has been a medium to really realize your strategy. Great. So coming back to the next question, and this question is very close to me: How really leaders have leveraged rewards in their communication and with transparency? Now I like to really go for uh, promote. You know, it's so, you know, 
uh, interesting question, you know. So, what what is in your view? How you have seen it, experienced it? Yeah. So, uh, hashtag transparency equals to hashtag confidentiality. <laughs> 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 right. You know, with with you know, we were just actually discussing about people holding six to seven offers. Just imagine what transparency is out there, mm -hmm. uh, and how exactly it is. No. So so coming back to the question in terms of transparency, right? There, there are three E's that we actually follow. Uh, now, this is this is my personal opinion as well. One is in terms of experience, two in terms of engagement, three in terms of ecosystem. Now that exactly builds, uh, transparency is something which comes out as an evolution or a side stream out of trust. Now, if you have the three E's together, that is, experience, how exactly an employee experience is carved out of a reward proposition, out of an employee value proposition, right? How exactly you engage your workforce, your leadership, and your clients as to how our people practices are is in terms of engagement, right? From the concept stage to engaging people saying that, hey, you know what, we are coming out this particular program, more to come during the year, we'll get back to you. How are we de developing the program as work in progress during the year? Hey, you know what? We actually told you back in Q1 that this particular program is coming up. This is how it is taking shape. You can expect more to come and we're going to be landing this particular program in Q3 or Q4. So it's a continuous journey of engagement. First from experience, you shift to engagement and then you create an ecosystem. Now, how do you create a particular ecosystem to get the transparency in place? Right from a hire to retire life cycle, there is always engagement and ecosystem that you create. You create an ecosystem for the employee. You create an ecosystem between the manager and the employee. You create an ecosystem for an employee to be he or herself to be the fullest in the firm by creating every moment that matters, being in terms of a growth, being in terms of an increment, being in terms of a benefit, being in terms of a well-being aspect. All of this put together will give you that evolution of transparency. Excellent. I think uh, three E's, ecosystem. I'm a big advocate of ecosystem and uh, for especially for HR, credibility and effectiveness. Lokendra, digital disruptions, you know, your company stand for and how that has been thought through by your company and that you are advocating and many companies are adopting your digital platform for transparency and communication. How has been your experience while dealing with your clients? Sure, so uh, while dealing with the clients, I, I think of two keywords right now from this question. One is standardization and one is strategic communication. Standardization because the more we can standardize this entire process of, uh, you know, across geographies, across roles, across areas and segments, we will be able to understand how compensation can be kept a little transparent. But the most important key is how can we strategically communicate it to the employee? This is there's something called happy medium yeah. where we get everybody there and explain it in a better way that this is how compensation is. You know, a classic example is EVP where, you know, it, it's, it's very, where both strategic communication and transparency is extremely yeah. necessary. Excellent. Lovely. Thank you. Colin? If I, yeah. If I can add, because transparency is very important when, it, when, when, we, call, when we talk about compensation, it's really what you want to communicate. Um, and uh, uh, while I'm a strong ad, uh, advocate of transparency in compensation, it's also what you want to communicate and what you want to actually, uh, what's, what's the message you want to give out of it. And for example, you know, things like sales incentives and things like that, that should be extremely transparent so that people are able to calculate what they're going to get at the end of the month uh, in terms of uh, for what sale they or what effort they have done. Uh, the philosophy of the organization. So what's the uh, approach to compensation, approach to benchmarking, approach to positioning, approach to increment, approach to performance management. I think that needs real adequate transparency uh, in and communication. And, and the last also is, have your employees really understood the complex compensation system that we have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all, we all HR guys probably assume they've understood it, but lot many people haven't really understood a lot of it. And so therefore, I think it's important to really spend some time uh, and explain to them the various uh, components that exist, the various benefits that are available, because that's really adding to the total EVP that we're yeah. really talking yeah. about. Excellent, Colin. I think. Uh, 
uh, in so many words, the panel is saying, keep it simple so that people can understand, appreciate. And at the same time, when you are communicating, you are listening. And that is where you can innovate quite a lot. When you meet with different types of people during uh, your communication sessions or during those discussions, you get to know and you can really value it with no cost. And that is the, you know, uh, I would say very, very important strategic bit you can bring uh, in your uh, transparency and communication, especially on the reward spot. Yes, your CTC is confidential. Nobody is interested in terms of really, you know, be transparent about it or communicating about it. It remains confidential. But the how part of it, what it, it has gone, how it is compared with various industries, how you are, you know, looking for the financial wellness for people through various mediums. I am happy to see Refine here today, you know, is uh, like one of the sponsors to this workshop. They, they have innovated something called Learn Wage Access, you know, and they have brought a lot of that financial wellness piece here. So uh, compliments to Chitresh if he is in the discussion today. So I have four minutes, four and a half minutes left. I want to really pause here. And if there are any questions from the, uh, you know, audience, from the audience, we would be happy to take those questions. Otherwise, I have a question for the panelists. So yes. Uh, we have a question from one of the gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, can somebody provide a mic to him? Is that okay if I avoid ask? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Jimmy Tete. I come in from uh, IDFC First Bank. Uh, so, this is one question. Uh, so, we see most of the reward systems, you know, being designed for, let's say, 80% of the employees of an organization. And today when we see is the rest of the 20%, at least in the last 20 years with the kind of or demand in the industry and the kind of startups coming in, these 20% are the people who are actually generating or creating value, which is let's say more than 50 to 100 times than these 80%. So then how do we, so is there, so with the rewards team here, you know, I just wanted to understand how do we look at this 20%? So are you as an uh, as, as as a department trying to create something very different for these twenty percent, and then a follow up. If we are doing it, then what happens to the rest of the eighty yeah. percent, and how do we look at it in I think future? A, a great question. Long answer is possible, but I like to keep it very very. You know, you need to be extremely you know be careful in developing that ecosystem which Pramod talked about, and that ecosystem is your creativity as a HR resource. You know what whether this 80% can become 95% through that ecosystem. Because you need customization. Today's world is customization and I am happy people who are leading HR functions, they are now bringing that customization by innovating on various platforms. And it does not take much cost. If you plan well, envisage well, execute well, communicate well, I think you can cover you have a lot of things through ecosystem. I want to go to quickly to Poonam if she has something to add on this. So, sure. So you mean to say 20% is you're talking about the talent, right? The top guys. Top guys, yeah. high post. So basically, yes, in our organization, we do take care of uh, talent and every organization that focuses towards talent, but at the same time, recently in our or, you know discussion it is not just 20 percent but how we can move this 20 percent to 30 to 40 percent at least in next two three years that is the first focus of the organization and therefore uh, you know however but we have to keep them also engaged and that 80 percent also engaged equally so meritocracy is one of the culture pillar in our organization so meritocratic benefits and rewards is what we have introduced. We have our emerging leadership program for the organization from the talent side. So we, you know, through that program, we do reward them. It, we do give their, you know, project-based incentives. We give more projects to those 20% people so that they can deliver uh, for the organization. For those projects, we give them incentives. All those things we do for that, you know, 20% population. However, at the same time, we give projects to our 80% people as well. We give opportunity. 
So this is what we do uh, in our organization and we try to engage them. However, it, you know, it differentiates automatically that 20% people perform in a better way and 80% may be their you know, average performance, which is uh, visible. That is I, the way we I think manage. you must collaborate with her later in the discussion. Sure, sure. I have a quick uh, 20 seconds for Lokendra on this. If you have, want to add something. Sure, sure. Yeah, just 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, yeah. sure. So, yeah. uh, I'm sure those 20% folks are those people who are, the, whose objective is very clear. They are actually showing the right cultural behavior, right performance metrics, everything is perfect with those guys. So they're the right examples for the remaining 80%. The second most important thing is how well we can celebrate those 20 people so that it motivates the remaining 80. Lovely. If we are not able to celebrate them properly, then we are Look not able to end it here. motivate the other guys. Yeah. Colin. Just one Colin, word, yeah. one second, personalization in, in uh, addition to customization. Yes. Great. I like to thank, thank you. all my panel members for this uh, wonderful uh, discussion today and uh, kudos to all of you. Round of applause to the panel.